Good afternoon. I got it right. I got it right. Good afternoon. It's um, it's time to think spiritually. It's Sunday at noon, and it is time for us to let go of the week that was and to think good thoughts about the week that is coming up, and especially to think good thoughts about ourselves and about our connection to the infinite, to creation, to to God, to whatever it is you like to call it. We're not real fussy here about what you call it because I don't think that creation is fussy about what you call it. I think it just likes to know that you're aware of how connected you are to all of that. So that's kind of what we talk about on Sundays and also on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock. We talk about our connection to the infinite and the fact that that which we consider the infinite, that which is all powerful and all knowing and created everything in the beginning, you know the stories, that, that we are not just connected to that um, because it's there and we're supposed to be but because we are in fact a part of that, that that God, if you will, is in and through everything and everyone. And that includes us because everything and everyone includes us. There's no way to get out of it. So none of us is so special that we are not part of that, but we are very special because we are part of that. And knowing that and working with that and becoming more aware of how connected we are to it makes us more powerful, more loving, more kind, more understanding, more in tune with the infinite and therefore more able to connect the lives that we dream of creating, more able to get over that which bothers us and and which seems to victimize us and to become powerful creators in our own life. So that's where I'm coming from. And I hope you will be too. I hope you will join us in, in all of this on Sundays and on Wednesdays at seven as well. Um, we call Wednesday, Wednesday matters because it does, you know, people call it hump day and that kind of suggests that there's something you have to get over. And usually by Wednesday, there is something you have to get over. Hurt feelings, something that didn't work out quite the way you thought it was going to. Um, who knows what? Your fears, your hopes, your dreams. And, um, and so we talk about that, both on Sundays and on Wednesdays. And I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here. I'm glad Spirit is here. Now that's a very dangerous thing to say around here because we have a cat named Spirit who tends to call when he come when he hear, hears his name called. So uh, if you suddenly see a gray tail running across the screen, um, you're not imagining things. That's that's our resident spirit and um, sometimes terrorist. That's kind of how he acts in this world. I've got a little bit of a scratchy throat this morning, so if you don't mind, I will. There. Ooh, that's good. I think it's lemons from our lemon tree. And somehow it always tastes better. Doesn't it taste better when, uh, when you grow it yourself as opposed to just going to the store and visiting Vaughn's selection? So I'm real happy with that. Thank you very much. Um, while I'm at it, let me thank the person that I'm talking to over here. This is Kak Young, and she keeps me focused in a lot of ways. Um, is that what I do? Among other things, yeah. When I tend to go off on my little kite string and float around in the stratosphere all by myself. She, uh, she does a lot to make this all work, and... Um, keep us technically proper 
and working and doing all the things that we're supposed to be doing here. So, thank you for that. You're welcome for that. And uh, thank you to all of you who have donated. That is much appreciated. Uh, some of you have set up monthly accounts where it just happens automatically. And, uh, and I'm grateful for those. Thank you so much. Um, some of you like to donate on the spot. And so there's a little button there should be on, um, on this page, hopefully attached to the talk. And uh, if you'd like to donate there, that is also much appreciated. It supports us in the work that we do and, uh, and keeps us alive and online and able to do things. Um, my cute computer has been acting strangely lately. It seems to uh, be possessed. <laughs> it makes decisions by itself. Now, I realize that sometimes they actually do that but it's making inappropriate decisions all by itself. And, uh, and I may be going computer shopping soon. So um, everything is appreciated. Just thank you for making it possible. We love being here for you and um, love sharing spirit with you, sharing the truth as we understand it about your connection to the Almighty, which only points to how magnificent and, in fact, Almighty you are. So, um, up talking. That's a new, a new way of looking at it. But uh, talking in such a way that it encourages you to think up, to think connected, to think powerful. And, um, to do some pretty magical things with your life. I believe you can do that. Now, is there anything else I should say before I start talking? See, she does keep me in line. No, I think you pretty much covered it. Okay. Yeah, except, you know, the, um, they have to keep their um, wishes and hopes and desires coming so you can pray for them. Because Thank you. I watch you pray, and you pray mighty good. <laughs> well, thank you. So there we go. All right. If um, if you have prayer requests, if there is anything in your life that you would like more of, less of, healed, um, disappeared. <laughs> I'm actually pretty good at disappeared. Um, if there is is anything that's sitting on your heart or your mind as something that um, could be better, should be better. Just put it in the chat box and let us know and we will put you on our prayer list and I will pray for you. I love to do that. I really do. I love to pray with and for you and um, I think I'm pretty good at it. I like to think I am had some pretty amazing results over the years so I think God is good at answering prayer is what I really believe and that when it is clearly stated um, stuff happens so let me help you make the changes you would like to make in your life through prayer and uh, and we'll go on from there won't we yes we will so, I think perhaps now it is time that I got to what it was I thought I would talk about today. And um, please just hang on for a second while I get things ready and begin. Begin to begin. You know, I've been, um, I've been thinking about faith a lot lately. What it is, what it isn't. Um, my mind tends to get on themes, I think most of our minds do. And, uh, and when I get on a theme, it stays with me for quite a while. Song titles come up, ideas come up, sometimes even book ideas come up. Um, but anyway, all of that reminded me of Children's Church, both at Spirit Works when I was the senior minister there in Burbank, and at the Cambria Unity Church, um, where I was also the minister. 
And I was thinking about all the wonderful people and the wonderful projects um, that that Grown Hups created for the children to do and how much they loved doing that. And it was to get the children to, to see and hear and touch and taste and feel what God is. And the children just loved it. They loved the projects. They loved the people. They loved thinking about God. They just ate it up. Um, in Matthew 18, uh, the New International Version, give or take a word, the disciples came to Jesus and said, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Isn't that a good question? Who is in the hierarchy of heaven? Who is the greatest? And Jesus called a little child over and had him stand among them. And he said, I tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whosoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Be ye as little children. Jesus says that we will not enter the kingdom of heaven unless we come, we become like a child. Hmm. Now, please realize that being childlike is not the same thing as being childish. I think more of us tend to be childish when it would serve us better to be childlike. See, it's not that that we are being asked to become immature and act childish in the traditional sense, but more that we accept things in simplicity, that we uncomplicate our lives and see the wonder in every minute. And that we believe, as children do, that life is unlimited. Children have a way of seeing and believing that that is amazing. It's only that when we grow up, we tend to start questioning everything and disbelieving. Children question, no doubt about it, sometimes endlessly. But then, if it makes sense to them, they accept and believe. The currency of the kingdom of heaven is faith. Have faith like a child. Children believe in God, although they are sometimes in disagreement about who and what God is and perhaps more specifically what God looks like and what he, she, it does during the day in its free time or when it's at work. So, case in point, how do kids describe God? Monica Parker, an author and actor, decided to ask kids really big questions about God. And the funny, insightful, sometimes unexpected, mostly unexpected answers were collected into her book, OMG, how children see God. Parker sent questions to about 300 kids, ages 4 to 12. The children came from varying economic and religious backgrounds and from around the world. But they answered honestly, as children tend to do. And they sent not just their comments, but drawings back to back up their opinions. In the drawings, some of the children were unsure of God's gender, understandably so, while others were convinced that God was more an unlimited superhero than anything else. A superhero picture. Abby, a nine-year-old from New York, had a bit bit of advice for the deity. God needs someone to take his picture, she said. 
so that we'd know what he looks like. Maybe he could do a selfie. Well, duh. Isn't that brilliant? Can you imagine the, the chief photographer angel? The author, whose parents were both Christian and Jewish, said that religion wasn't discussed very often in her childhood home. So when she became a parent, she was determined to celebrate every holiday with her family. And why not? Why limit your celebration of God? Her son was actually the inspiration for the book. One Christmas when he was seven, he asked about God. And they told him that even though we can't see God, they believe that God lives inside every living being. The next morning, he came down and pronounced that he knew someone who had seen God. His doctor, he said because when she cut people open to fix them, she could see right inside and see God. That stuck with the author and it made her wonder how other children felt about God in you know, these very complex times that we live in. And that of course is what got her wondering and well, her wondering and her efforts got me to wondering and well, here we are. So I have a few thoughts for you this morning. First, I'd like to show you some copies of the children's drawings of what God is or, or acts like or looks like. And some thoughts from the children about who God is and what God can do. But before I go there, I'd like you to think about two things right now. Think about who God is. And then think about what God can do in your life. I also would like to share my favorite all-time children's story. It goes back a lot of years to when Lainey's daughter Ayla was just a little girl. If you've been with me for a while, you know that little girl just got married. Now, I may not have the story perfectly accurate. I've been telling it for a lot of years now, and you know how stories tend to get changed when you keep retelling them. But I think I've got it pretty close to right. Lainey and Ayla were in the car driving home from church, if I remember, and the conversation, as I remember, went something like this. Lainey asked Ayla what she had learned in children's church. And Ayla said, I learned that God is everywhere. Well, that's right, her mother said. So, Ayla asked, if God is everywhere, is God in our house? Well, yes, her mother replied. And, said Ayla, if God is everywhere, is God in our car? Of course, Lainey said. And then, said Ayla, get ready for it. If God is everywhere, is God in my shoes? I think I would have had to pull over and practiced breathing. Is God in my shoes? Oh my, yes. God is certainly in your shoes. How profound is that? Lainey told me about the conversation later that week, so very many years ago, and I've never forgotten it. I know I never will. I still get chills every time I hear her little voice saying, is God in my shoes? I only wish someone had told me when I was that age that God was in my shoes. But it's never too late to learn, my friends, especially from the children. I have some more ideas from the children that might get you started with the with your thinking. Um, and when you're done deciding what God means to you, I'd like you to grab a piece of paper and whatever utensils you might like to use and draw a picture of God. What does God look like to you? Where do you find God? What are God's surroundings? 
What do you see God doing? So let me show you a couple of pictures while you're thinking. Here's a picture of the surgeon working on a child. It says, God lives inside every living thing. So my doctor has seen God when he cuts people open. I hope I'm holding this up right for you. This one's one of my favorites. It says, God's got an invisible head and he floats in the garden. One side is night and the other side is day. And God sees the owls and the bunnies and the butterflies. God also rides a motorcycle, but he's playing hockey in Pasadena right now. He can do everything. Can your God do everything? It can. It can. This one's very sweet. It says, God doesn't sleep because he watches over us all the time. And there's a picture of the world and God and Santa Claus is even in the picture. Isn't that cool? Gabby thinks that God has giant ears so he can hear everything we are saying. Well, there's an omniscient God for you, an omnipresent God with great big ears. And then with the more modern tack here, Michaela said, has, has driven, drawn a picture of God at his cloud desk. Isn't that cool? With all those monitors, reminds me of my son. Okay, so it's time to be ye as little children. Time to fill up that paper with your ideas of who God is and what God can do. And then, if you really want to have some fun, I have one more project you might like doing, or find interesting, or both. I'd like you to find an empty box that has a lid. It can be any size. It can be a little jewelry box. It can be a box about this size. It can be bigger, bigger than a bread box, if you want it to be. Totally up to you. Just needs to be a box with a lid. And I'd like you to write the word faith on the inside of the lid. Now, ultimately, you can use this box in any way you want. You can decorate it and make it fancy, or you can just leave it plain and just visit it once in a while and let it renew your faith in God or humanity or yourself. It can be a reminder, or it can be a real box filled with faith, if you will let it. It can be the place where you put little quotes and thoughts that inspire and uplift you, the place where you can go to draw out some faith if you need it. And it can be the place where you put your faith, knowing that there is that in the universe that responds to faith and creates the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What would that faith look like? More specifically, what, what would it look like to you? I found something truly wonderful quite by accident one day. We hadn't moved to Ventura yet, but we were down here for the day and and it was almost Halloween and we were in a thrift shop, the Sparks second hand store in Ventura, looking for inspiration for Halloween for a party that we had been invited to go to. Cack had tried on a very large and floppy purple and black striped hat that looked bewitchingly cute on her. And then she put some bunny ears on me. And the woman who was running the shop was taking pictures of it all. We were, in fact, on their website, me and my bunny ears and Cack in her big floppy hat. I was escaping to a corner of the shop before Cat could find something else to put on my head when I spotted my treasure. It would be an understatement to say that it wasn't in the best shape in the world. In fact, it looked like it had been used a lot and then put aside. It showed signs of neglect. And it was broken in a few places and, well, frankly, a whole lot less for wear. So I left it there on the table. 
looking abandoned. And we moved on. But I couldn't get it out of my mind. So the next day, on our way out of town, I had to go back and rescue it. It was still there in the corner of the thrift shop, and, and the bright light of day did absolutely nothing to make it look more attractive. But I just couldn't leave it there. So I bought it, and we took it home. And Cat, bless her heart, did a considerable amount of repair work on it. But even before she was done, I thought it was beautiful. And I loved what it made me think and imagine. See, even without knowing its story, well, I can make one up for it, can't I? So I imagined that it belonged to a young girl and that she put things inside that made her remember God and gave her faith. Momento, mementos of, of miraculous moments, perhaps, and and even some inspiring thoughts that came her way. I like to think that, that the box helped her to have faith and that her faith made her feel whole. So whole, in fact, that one day she realized that it was time to pass this treasure on to someone else. So she sent it to the second chance store to inspire someone else to give faith a, a second chance. And there it was, waiting for me. I think we could all use a faith box. We all have stories of times when spirit came through for us. But our stories are only meaningful if we remember them, if we use them as a foundation for building our faith. I like to imagine that my box contained exactly the stuff of which miracles are made. Faith, just like it said, inside the lid. I did a little bit of research on the words faith box, and I read about someone who started a faith box after hearing friends talk about framing the first dollar they earned after working off a large debt. They used it as a reminder that faith comes through if you have it, and if you do what you are guided by your faith to do. Hmm. And there is the even larger truth. Faith without works, without some kind of action, is just words. Because without the action that faith calls for, it isn't really real faith. The, uh, the Hindu Upanishads say when one has faith, he thinks. One who lacks faith does not think. Faith gets your mind working in positive paths and ultimately calls you to do something, to pay attention to what rises up in you and to step forward to prove that your faith is real. Even in the darkest night, faith is the evidence of things not seen. It is the evidence of the path we cannot yet see. The evidence of the road we have not yet walked. But still, we step forward. Not by sight, but by faith. Most of us want guarantees before we step out into life, don't we? But life, in case you haven't noticed, is not so neat. But if we step out in faith, we are guaranteed something more. With faith, we go where we might not otherwise go. We might go where we might otherwise not go and find there what has called us to itself, to the life that we've dreamed. If we don't go, it's because we have given in to fear. And so instead of putting our faith in spirit, we have put our faith in the appearances. We have misplaced our faith. Instead of believing in a God that is unlimited and that lives within each of us, as the children know, and expresses through each of us, we have placed our faith in a dysfunctional God, a weak God, a God that is really not God at all, but some kind of 
demigod that for the moment has seduced us into forgetfulness. We have put our faith in what we can see with our limited vision. We are focusing on the clouds and forgetting the sun. Faith establishes that what we sense is true. That what we want to believe in is real. Too many of us were, were raised in religions with man-made rules. And when we questioned the rules, we were told to take it on faith, which at least in my experience gave faith a bad name. But what I believe now is that that which is really true, that which is of God, can handle the questions if we have the courage to ask them. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. We hope so much. We hope for understanding. We hope for world peace. We, we hope for wholeness. But while we are hoping, let us actively look for the presence of that which would help us to create that. Let us believe in something bigger than our fears or our lack or our misunderstanding. Let us believe, let us have faith, and let us exercise that faith in the creation of a better world. A better world for ourselves and for the other, as of April 1st, 7.9 billion people. Voltaire once wrote, faith consists in believing when it is beyond the power of reason to believe. But is it really beyond the power of reason to believe? Do we not, each of us, have memories of times when the seemingly miraculous has occurred? Do we not, each of us, have a recollection of a time when something outside ourselves said within ourselves, go ahead, or stop, or do it? And wasn't that just the right thing for us to do? Those memories are not beyond the power of reason to believe. They are real. We have lived them, but we need to remember them. We trust that the sun is shining even on the cloudiest day because we know that just beyond the clouds, it's there, even though we cannot see it in the minute. It has come out before. It will come out again. We have faith. Khalil Gibran said, faith is a knowledge within the heart beyond the reach of proof. Hmm. Is it beyond the reach of proof? Or have we simply forgotten that in our memories and in our daily lives, there is proof all around us? Faith is with us every day. We practice it every day. When we leave home without a raincoat, when we start our cars, when we drive down the road. Any of those actions requires an amount of faith. Whenever we work toward a worthy goal, we are exercising faith. We show our faith in something that we cannot yet see, but which we can still believe in. You can't see gravity, but you can see what it does, and you trust that. You have faith in that. You don't just take your container of liquid and drop it, assuming that it will find its way neatly to the table because you know that gravity is going to pull it straight down with some force. You can't see how life works, but you can see how life expresses. And you trust that. You trust that every time you plant a seed or a bulb. You trust that something will grow. You have faith in that. Blaise Pascal wrote, belief is a wise wager. I like that. It's a wise wager. Granted that faith cannot be proved, what harm will come to you if you gamble on its truth and it proves false? If you gain, you gain all. If you lose, <laughs> you lose nothing. Are you willing to take a chance? on faith. 
Are you willing to put some faith into your own life? Are you willing to expect that it, in turn, will manifest the substance of that which you hope for? The evidence of things that you cannot quite yet see. I'm going to ask you to gamble on the truth of what I have said today. My faith box was someone else's idea of what a faith box should look like. But still, it spoke to me. And then one day, it was time to pass my treasure on to someone else. So I sent it back at the second chance store to inspire someone else to give faith another chance. What speaks to you? What do you see in your mind's eye when you think of having faith? What do you hear? What do you feel? You don't have to really begin your faith box or finish it today. You might want to add something, some things to it. What it looks like is totally up to you. It's your faith box, if you will let it be. And I know that it will change your thinking and change your life, if you will let it. It really is all about faith and action, movement. Be moved this week. Be moved to have faith. And let that faith move you to do to be even more godlike, more creative, more loving, more wise, more understanding, more powerful, more abundant, more whole than you have ever been before. I know that for you. I absolutely know that for you. I know it to be so. And so it is. So the theme seems to be faith. <laughs> can draw a picture of God, the kids did, and they're charming. I think it would be fun to draw a picture of God and what God does in our lives and then frame it and hang it on the wall in a prominent place. And when somebody says, what's that? You can say, my child drew it. It's a picture of God. <laughs> Be as little children. Have fun with life. Enjoy your time here. It goes so quickly. Have some fun. Be creative. Build a faith box. You can start with wood and build one all by your, literally build one all by yourself, or you can just find an empty, empty store box, um, maybe a little bitty jewelry box or a great big store box. I mean, it's your faith box. Don't you want to? I kind of want to build another one now. Having parted with the original, sending it back from whence it came, I'm kind of tempted now to have another one. Are we going to Joanne's or Michael's then? We might have to do that, yeah. It's a good outing. All I need is a box and some paint and some glue. and We've got the paint and the glue. It's a fun project, and you have something really wonderful when it's done. But I do want you to write out what, what God is to you, what it looks like, what you think it does on its day off. Actually, I don't feel like God takes a day off. I think God takes a month off. 
December, Santa Claus steps in, takes over. God gets to go to the Bahamas. Just my thought. You don't have to believe in that. But I want you to trust that there is a power for good in the universe and that you use it. And the more consciously you use it, the more consciously you are aware of that presence and the power within you, the more powerful your life becomes. So there. So, I'm looking at the clock and I'm thinking we should pray. Yeah? Why don't we do that? Because it never hurts and it feels so good. So close your eyes if that's comfortable for you. If not, just soft focus. We'll be looking within. We'll be finding and solidifying your connection to the power within. And I invite you to take a breath. It can be a great big breath if that's what your body calls for right now. Or it can be just a gentle breath. Do what works for you. And I invite you to know with me that spirit creation. God is all there is in and through everything, every one. All that there is is God. And we think with the mind of God, we act through our individualized body of God, we, we serve humanity and thereby serve God because God is all there is. All that there is is God. And so I know that as we speak our words, as we make our claims, we do so from within that presence that is within us. We believe in that, we trust that, as children do. For we are, in fact, children of God. Godlings, if you will. We are God becoming. as we become more godlike. And so in our practice what what I know is that in order to be more of that which we are intended to be, we dedicate ourselves to being more loving, more understanding, more faithful. more true, more wise, more patient, more kind. And created in the image and likeness of God as we speak our words for the truth to be revealed, for our bodies to be healed, for our minds to be peaceful, for our work in the world to be successful for peace to prevail, as we speak our words for that, so that unfolds in this world. So it becomes. And if there is that which we are called to do, then we see it, we know it, we feel it, and we commit ourselves to the doing of it. And because of that, I know this, that lives are saved, that bodies are healed, 
that peace reigns. I know that lives prosper and that hearts are mended. And that we get closer each day to the realization that we are already in paradise. And I am so deeply grateful for this realization, so deeply, deeply grateful for the miracles that are unfolding right now. For the faith that is expanded for the truth that is revealed, for all the good that comes of being more childlike and having faith. And in gratitude, we simply let it be so. And so it is. And another breath as we breathe in the power and the peace and the understanding and the wisdom and anything else that we may require to get on with our wonderful lives. Well, then there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this afternoon as much as I have. I'd love to see you on Wednesday. Check in. Your assignment for the week is to be ye as little children. Know what that means. Honor what that means. Be true to yourself, and you will be being true to the God within you. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday, and a great start of your week, and I'll see you on Wednesday. And so it is. <laughs>